All right, we're back, and of course, we're going to talk about the Toronto Blue Jays. Five and a half games out of a wild card. They take on the Tampa Rays tonight. R.A. Dickey on the mound. Now, if this was July, you'd be like, the Blue Jays are sitting pretty. I think they're contenders. All of a sudden, August hits. September is approaching. This team seems to be fading fast. Do you see this team having any chance of making the postseason or maybe a quick run to at least compete for that second wild card spot? Grab a fork. Grab a fork, put them in, they're done. You know, what's that smell on the grill? Yeah, take them off, they're done. No, not a chance. Not a chance. Uh, they haven't improved. You know what? And I criticize some of the players for criticizing their GM for not making moves to the trading deadline. But just to bring a couple of guys in at the trading deadline, whether it be big parts of the puzzle or small parts of the puzzle, will show the rest of the roster that, you know what, we want to win and we want to win now. Now they're just kind of saying, well, uh, how about the Oakland Athletics picking up Adam Dunn? Do you think a bat like him would have served oh, huge for the Blue Jays lineup? Considering this guy's got power and apparently could pitch if they were desperate <laughs> enough uh, to need one. But, but seriously, you have a guy like Adam Dunn who kind of went through the, that trade, the waiver deadline. Um, what is wrong with this, with this Blue Jays organization? Why can't they seem to pull the trigger or at least take that gamble like other teams in their division? The Boston Red Sox had no problems doing that. They ended up getting Jonas Cespedes. Uh, in exchange for a quality pitcher, again, John Lester. Uh, Tampa Bay, I know they gave up, uh, was it David Price? But they got some great prospects in return. Why can't, the Yankees seem to pull off a trade with everybody. <laughs> Why can't the Blue Jays do that, Matt? I think it's just a young GM in double A. I think he's too scared to make those moves and move those prospects because you might give up a guy like, get John Lester, which would be huge, but he'd have to give away a couple of his best prospects. And I think he's scared, you know, what if Lester doesn't sign or, you know, these prospects turn into, you know, MLB All-Star, Cy Young winners, whatever it may be. But I think uh, just a young GM that's not too sure what to do in this situation with the playoffs around the corner. And I think he's just too scared and too keen on keeping those prospects. We saw this with Mariano Rivera. We're now seeing it with Derek Jeter. The farewell tour continues, of course. His last stop in Toronto was over the weekend. They gave him a nice little present. What do you guys say about that? Do you think Derek Jeter, much like Mariano, is warranted of having this big celebration for him? I think so, but what do you guys say? Oh, yeah, yes and no. You know what, if you put Derek Jeter in Milwaukee, would we be looking at him the same way? Would we be looking at him saying he's this greatest player of all time? Or because he's wearing the pinstripes, he's in New York, he's in the biggest market. I think because he's a clutch player. It's like he's Cal Ripken. He's a clutch Ripken. player, but at the same time, I'm saying it depends what marketplace he's in where you can really showcase that player. You can't find a bigger market to be in uh, than New York. And if you're a big player and you're a Yankee, then you're a living god almost. So uh, Derek Jeter, yeah, it's nice to see it. And he's a, and he's a good person too. At least he comes across like it. He's got a good image. You rarely hear about him making negative publicity in the news. Um, he, you don't really hear much about him. That's the thing. It's not like his outlandish on Twitter doing all this stuff. He's very quiet. The only things we know is A is a good ball player and he's got smoking hot women on his arm. <laughs> so guys, what do you guys say about Derek Jeter? Like, I think he's warranted as probably one of the best players, shortstops, at least top five in baseball top three for sure yeah, he's, right he's one of the best shortstops ever to play the game but i don't think he i don't think anyone deserves the special treatment that he's given with the presence you want a special treatment you want to have a great career your special treatment is when you get to the hall of fame that's your special treatment i don't think people their teams need to be giving them trips or gifts and all of that you know it's gone overboard when the red Sox are going to do something for him <laughs> they did it with mariano what, you how really, is that any God, different oh because you, you trust me there's a lot of red Sox fans you know, they, they respect him and everything, but he's a Yankee still. He's still a Yankee, a Red Sox fan. Oh, come to. on. You can still show respect for a person you do not like. The evil you empire. standing no. ovation. I don't think you need to give him like a Give him a sawed-off bat like they did Mariano. So what, what, what is do. That was that was Derek classy. Jeter goes out and gets all these presents, like what does he really need? What does he need that he can't buy? That's the point. Like that's why a, a sawed-off bat for Mariano was special because that's just funny. Yeah. Uh, so it may be something the equivalent. But I do want to get to this, guys. Uh, this is very important. Now, you have Las Vegas, Quebec City, Seattle, and Toronto. Potential new expansion places for the NHL. The, now the NHL has denied this, saying we, we haven't talked about this. But there's a lot of speculation that the league wants to grow. Out of those four cities that I just mentioned, which one is more likely to have an NHL team in the near future? 
I say Quebec and Toronto because Toronto doesn't have an NHL team right now. Um, <laughs> oh, is sorry, that a Leaf, shot? Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Leaf fans. Uh, but seriously, if you can put two teams in the New York market, you could put two teams in the Toronto market, and really three with Buffalo. But I, I, I think you can. You can do it. I don't. I can't see Vegas. 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 They have an arena. Why not? Oh, that's a dangerous spot that's to have a, a pro team. That's yeah. a very why? dangerous spot. There's, there's, there's reasons. reasons you can there's, gamble everywhere. But there's reasons why the NBA won't go there. There's reasons they've why they've had they, all-star games. They, they've they've talked. Had, but they're they, never the gonna The NHL have a wants to be the pioneer because you've heard the NFL talk about moving to Vegas and Los Angeles. Uh, you've heard the NBA saying, you know what? Maybe we could relocate a team. There were talks before that. It's kind of dead down with Sacramento staying in Sacramento. But why not? Why is why can't Vegas be so viable? Well, you have still. I actually want to ask you. What, you haven't given me a team. Is there a place out of those four cities? That would work. Well, first. it's going to be a Canadian team. I, you don't think City, Seattle would work? It could work, yeah. but I think if you want to branch out and you want to make a name for the game and make it bigger, you got to go to a Canadian market. And Quebec is obviously the team that wants a team, that's had a team, and have a lot of success. And the Colisee is being built. So there you go. I don't think you. I don't think they need to expand, in my opinion. I think 30 teams is enough. If you're adding more teams, you got the potential. You know, we're going to make the schedule longer. The season's going to drag. I know you love. The, when there's hockey being played in oh, June, yeah. I know that's you're a big awesome. fan of that's that. That's awesome. So you're going to risk that. And, you know, I, you already had the realignment. I don't think you need to do another one. 30 teams for me yeah, sounds yeah, perfect. Have, we, have we tried to really push the, the NHL market into places where it's not known in the States enough? Uh, well, that I was going to say, Scotty Bowman, or uh, Scotty Bowman, sorry, um, Gary Bettman, the commissioner, has pushed this game to Puerto Rico. They played exhibition games there. They played exhibition games outdoors in Vegas years ago. Yeah, they, about the whole point games, is expanding yeah. places. We're going, you know what they're going to do? They're going to go to Asia next. We're going to have an co intercontinental oh. league. Well, they That's what's going to go on. Well, they played Japan and they had Finland Exactly. And they, they've done and this before. I, I didn't like it. I don't yeah. like it. It's NHL. It's a North American game. It should be stayed in North America. Well, I was going to say there was a recent statistic. Teams that went out there ended up winning cups. The LA Kings were another example. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? I'm also saying this. Uh, when we return, we're going to have Lloydminster's favorite game over under coming up next.